There were some local truckers on here just a second ago. One thing I want to demonstrate is this XR technology noise filter. Yeah, it's a filter all right, because it takes it from that to that. And actually, here's the a &L. A and l But, in my opinion, and I wanted to start with that because I need it hooked up to an antenna to demonstrate this. It just... Now, granted, these guys are really weak because they're heading away from me. But I can understand my point... Oh, my God. i got to turn this thing off. That noise is going to drive me nuts. That's the next problem with this thing. Um, but... To me, it's actually, I can understand those fairly distant contacts with this off. When I turn this noise filter on, yeah, forget it. <laughs> it just, it cuts out so much audio frequency range that, yeah, it, they just become unintelligible. Um, you know, the, the ANL noise blanker work fine, but yeah, that, yeah, I don't think I'd ever be using that. Um, another nifty feature. Now, what this is, I mean, it's, yeah, I need to start at the beginning. Um, this is a Midland 9001Z. Uh, apparently it was a fairly short-lived radio, didn't have a long production life, and if they're all like this one, I can understand why. It's a piece of junk. Um, and I'm not saying it's a piece of junk because it's surface mount construction. I, that's perfectly fine with me. Actually, that tends to be a little bit more durable, but uh, it's got some bad points to it. So, these are discontinued, and actually... I don't know, somebody have to tell me. I was on Midland's website, and I don't think they make CBs anymore. I think they make, you know, some of the personal two-way radio systems nowadays, but I don't think they make CB radios anymore. Was this? I really don't know, haven't kept up. Um, yeah, I mainly work on older radios, but was this the last Midland model ever to be made? <laughs> it may be, because... Um, and if all of them work like this one does... Yeah, I can see why it didn't last very long, because holy crap, is this thing a, a noisy, buzzing, data, you know, buzz-induced, noisy piece of junk. I mean, just wow. So, the problem I'm noticing is, uh, this is not my radio, it's a customer's radio. Um, for starters, to do an alignment, yeah, there's no information on this radio. There's no schematic, there's no service manual. Um, the alignment procedure that there is for this... Um, is the very, very most basic information that was given to the FCC when they filed application for a license for this thing. And it doesn't list uh, a lot of the adjustments in this radio. They're not even in, in the alignment procedure that was given to the FCC. Um, so you're kind of left up to your own wits to do an alignment on this. Now, it's not too bad if you work on radios. You yeah, figure it out. With, the, with the, the limited information that's in that document, you can actually figure out the alignment. But... Uh, you know, as far as working on it, forget it. It's surface mount. Um, so if you're not familiar with how surface mount boards are made, you'll see all these tiny little dots. It looks like it's, you know, the board has got something growing on it, all these little speckles all over the place. Well, those aren't holes where there's missing, missing components. You know, back in the old days, uh, they may use one board for several different chassis. And the difference between one radio or another, actually like this one, all of this stuff in here is missing. There's, there's just no parts here. You can see all the solder pads, but there's just no parts on them. So, uh, actually where that's at, that's probably, if I had to take an educated guess, might have been part of an FM circuit in a export, you know, in a radio that would have been sold overseas, because uh, other countries use FM where we use AM. But, uh, anyhow... All these little holes, there are what are called vias or throughs or pass-throughs. So, this right here is actually all copper, okay? And there's, on the other side, there's a ground plane also. And these little little dots are vias, and they're connected or plated through holes, so they connect the ground plane on one side of the board to the other. Well, they also connect circuit traces. Right here is a perfect example. Here's a zero-ohm jumper resistor. You can follow that circuit trace over here, and it goes to that tiny little spot right there. There's nothing there other than a via. 
So what it does is it comes out here, jumps up here, goes through that via to a circuit trace on the bottom side of the board. Then it continues across somewhere and it runs into, you know, it's boxed in again. So they'll have another via and the circuit trace pops back up on this side of the board and it'll continue on to wherever it's going and can go through another via back down to the other side of the board. And yeah, trying to trace circuits on something like this, hang it up. I mean, if it's your own radio and you've time doesn't, you know, <laughs> time is no object. You know, it doesn't matter. You're not paying, you're doing it yourself. It might be one thing, but yeah, paying somebody to uh, reverse engineer something like this, trying to troubleshoot it, just throw the radio away. Cause uh, honestly, it's, it's not going to be, it's not going to be worth it. If you had a schematic, it wouldn't be a problem, but uh, yeah, trying to just do simple circuit tracing on boards like this can be an absolute nightmare. So that's the first downfall. Um, you know, that doesn't make it a bad radio. That just makes it extremely hard to work on. The problem that I'm hearing is a digital buzzing noise. Uh, now, I did some probing around with an oscilloscope. I've kind of traced it up into this area. So I believe it's the driver for the, uh, the two se seven segment displays or, you know, your channel indicator. So if I turn the radio on, actually, let me switch to over my dummy load. So that way there's some guaranteed no signal coming in. And with the volume down the whole way, channel 18 is the loudest. Now, I don't know if you can hear that. Move the camera because the speaker is way back there mounted up back on the wall behind, behind a stack of test equipment. But I'll turn it on and off. So I'm not sure if you can hear that or not. But there's an easy way, because of course if I turn the volume up, you're not going to really hear it. Or it's at least not that noticeable. But I have a uh, receive switcher, so I'm going, what I'm going to attach it to is I'm going to hook it up to an input on that guy right there, which is a receive switcher. So that, I can run six different radios or any type of audio inputs into that, and then I have them run to a set of... Uh, Kenwood monitor speakers that hang on the wall, and I just plugged the normal speaker back in. Okay, it might help if I grab the right cord here. So I'm going to plug that ah, come back here, and that's going to make it really noticeable because that's going to be going through a set of Kenwood monitor speakers up on the wall. So you hear that? And there's actually more than one sound there. Now I know you can hear the mm noise. That's very noticeable. Um, but I can hear in the background even farther, there's at least one, if not possibly two, other digital sounding buzzes that I can hear there. One of them's very clear, and I think there's actually another one there. And you can watch as I change channels, its intensity changes. So it, and 18 and 16 are about the loudest channels. But when you get down to channel one, it's completely silent. So you can hear the, the, the noise level difference. 7's almost completely quiet. One, a little bit of white noise, that can be just be expected from an audio amplifier. Yeah, that's just, that would drive me absolutely batshit. <laughs> so, let me unhook that, and I'll just hook up a normal monitor speaker again. Um, so, I don't know, if, I've never had to work on one of these. Like I say, they're apparently very limited production. You don't see them a lot. Um, some people liked them, apparently, because of this feature. Now, I can understand why this would be a really handy feature, what's on this knob. So I'm going to turn it on. I've got a minute to talk until it, it goes off. And just be aware, from the time I turn this knob, a minute later, there is going to be an extremely loud noise. So you may want to turn your, uh, you know, your sound down in a minute. So you know, if you just start counting a minute from the time I turn this knob, there's going to be a really loud noise. Okay, so it's on now. And that's what they call it, Guardian, yeah, Guardian. So it's got 1, 5, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. And what that is is a timer. And it's a basically a, well, you can use it for two things. 
either as if you wanted to take like a cat nap for 30, you know, 40, 50, 60 minutes, you're a truck driver, you just pulled off the side of the road, want to catch a half hour quick nap, you can set that as an alarm, or you can set it down a really short time, like one or five minutes. So if you're afraid you're going to doze off while you're driving, you can set that timer, and every minute, and it should be coming up here soon, and it actually increases in volume. Once that alarm goes off, I'm going to let it play for a little while, and it will increase after a, a certain amount of time, it will increase in intensity. And if you wait a while, it increases intensity again. If you wait a little while, it increases in intensity again and can, continues to just keep getting louder and louder and louder. And it can come on any time now. It's amazing how long a minute takes when you're... Ah, there we go. And I'll let it run until the uh, intensity kicks up. So there you can hear it just got louder again. So you can turn your volume back up. I've now turned it off. Um, but yeah, that, I actually, that's a nice feature. But that buzzing noise, and like I said, I can hear it clear as day. And when I was listening to people on the radio, if you get on any of these channels where it's really loud, you can still hear that noise. So if there's anybody else who's ever owned one of these things, is that normal? I don't know. It's the first one I've ever had on my bench. So is that, that digital noise normal in all of these radios? And was that one of the reasons they stopped making it? Because it was such a noisy... And I don't mean noise from this. I mean that digital noise that apparently is coming from the display driver for the, the, seven, the double... Se, se, yeah, I'll spit it out here eventually. The double seven-segment display. Um, you know, now let me turn it off. And there's another thing I don't like on this, and it actually has the same thing in uh, commercial applications. I could see this being a problem. And that's edge board connections. So you can see right here and all along here, just like the Cobra 29, uh, what is that, an LX Max, or the LX radios, they have these edge board connectors. This is just something that's Bound to fail. Um, surface mount itself is very reliable, but doing shit like that is not. That is that front circuit board, okay, has a solder pad, let's say right about here, or actually the no, in the case of those boards, it's like in the middle of the board, but there's a solder pad. This board, this interface board here, you can see it actually stepped down, okay. There's wires connect between here, but from this board to this board, had these edge solder connections. So that would be this board, okay? And they have solder joints or solder pads that run the whole way out to the edge of the board. And then they just butt the two boards together and fill that in with solder. That's the only thing that's holding those two together. Nothing mechanical. Just over time, flexing, just heating and cooling. Even if, honestly, if the vehicle's not moving, just having the radio outside in heating and cooling cycles... Radio chassis, everything moves and twists a little bit, but over time, that's that's it's going to go like this, and they're they're going to crack. Now you can you know extend the life of stuff like that. You can desolder them, use a better grade, uh, you know, remove the lead free solder that they use, which they're required to, um, and replace that with a good higher tensile strength, you know, lead tin and silver solder. But even then. You'll extend the life of, you know, it, that happening, but it's bound to happen. And I just noticed, is that the world's crappiest meter bracket? Or is that a figment of my... Nope, that is the... Wow, that's really frigging cheap. They used a just a chunk of circuit board. <laughs> like a cutoff. You know, a little, little piece from the factory when they were making these boards. They had, you know, they, they come in sheets and, you know, and they're manufactured. Little cutoffs at the end. That's exactly what that looks like. It was just a cut off. And yeah, we'll just drill a hole in that, and that's what we'll use to, to mount our, our meters in there. <laughs> oh, they actually have a metal bracket, it looks like, on this side. But yeah, this side, they just use a chunk of circuit board. Man, how cheap can they get? Cutting corners and pennies at every possible... <laughs> the one thing they didn't cheap out on, you, you have to give them credit, was the ribbon cable that goes from this board to this board. Normally, most radio manufacturers would have done this. They'd have just used some normal old ribbon cables, just, you know, the wires straight through the board and soldered down. Nah, man, they've got some really nice, heavy-duty... This is the kind of stuff you'd see in your computer, you know. 
really nice for is that a 40 yeah it's a 40 piece that's for you know 40 40 wires or 40 pins but yeah they used a really nice heavy duty connectors i mean yeah they they went the extra expense on that i mean spared no expense on this board connection but yeah these they didn't and now grounds and i get the feeling they were trying to get rid of that buzzing noise see there's a black wire there black wire there and black wire there you see how big these things are? <laughs> I mean, that's the same size as the actual power wires coming in for the, you know, that supply the entire radio. They've got these big, huge, heavy ground wires going up to these things, trying to ground all this. I can only assume that was part of their attempt to try and get rid of that noise that's being generated here is lots of grounds. Well, I'm sorry, guys, it didn't work because <laughs> it's still noisy. But, uh... So, there you go. There's a Midland, if you've never seen one before, uh, Midland 9001Z. Um, yeah, like I say, I mean, I can see where this could have been a good radio. It actually looks well designed. You know, it doesn't really look like there's anything bodged. Now, I mean, other than the stuff that was hand soldered. You know, like the SWR bridge right here. That's what this core with a couple of wires that go through it. That's going to be for the SWR circuit. But, uh, you know, other than stuff like that, it doesn't really look like they had really had any bodges. Um, it's just, man, that buzz, that, that just that kills this radio for me. So let me know if you've ever owned one. Do they all hum? Oh, I actually missed. There's another noise. Now, granted, this noise you'll never hear unless you have the covers off and do what I did, I plug it back in, turn it on, and I help I plug the microphone back in, which completes the receive circuit. So, I was in here sniffing around with a scope probe trying to find that noise, and I had my hand down in here and I bumped something, and I had one hell of a loud, you know, noise come out of the speaker. It's a noise I'm not, working on radios, I'm not all that unfamiliar with. I'm used to touching, you know, you touch in the audio circuit, you, know, you get weird noises, because you're, you're shorting it out with your finger. It's not a dead short, you're not going to hurt anything, but, you know, that's actually an easy way to tell if the audio amp's working. Just rub, rub your fingers across it. Only on solid state stuff like this that's low voltage. I'll be very clear about that. Don't go doing that with high voltage stuff or especially tube. <laughs> but uh, that's an easy way to tell if the audio amp's doing anything is just run your fingers across it. But I got a noise up here. And I wasn't, I didn't have my hand down at circuit board level. I was up here on top of these components and it finally dawned on me what I'd done. I had touched an electrolytic capacitor. So. Now, I thought that was a bad electrolytic, that's actually this one right here. I thought it might be a bad electrolytic capacitor, because I've never run into that before in a modern CB radio, where you touch the can, because what we have here is an aluminum can. Matter of fact, I can reach down here and grab a big monster one. Um, this is you know a big, large version. This was a multi-section out of an old piece of tube equipment, but basically the same thing. You have an aluminum can, the electrolytic capacitors inside all wound up the aluminum foil, but... In this style of capacitor, this can doesn't doesn't touch the negative lead of the capacitor, but they do put this in this you know plastic sleeve around it that has the you know value that you know the in microfarads, um, the voltage rating, manufacturer's markings, temperature grade, and all that, and then that also helps to protect it against stuff falling against it and shorting out. But yeah, apparently. Now, got to remember, there's no schematic, so you're left at your wits to look at this. So we know this is the audio circuit. So most of these components around in this area are all going to be audio. Modulation circuits back here. You know, the mic jack's right here, so, you know, the path's going to come back to the audio amp. So you, you, we pretty much know this is all audio anyhow. Come on, wires stay outside. Um, but yeah, so just touching the can, and I... I don't know if you can hear that. The, the more I start to press, the louder it gets. But just... So not even touching the metal, just getting my fingers around the outside. That electrolytic capacitor is acting as, a, uh, as an antenna. 
So it's and what that noise is that's created when I do that, that's a 60 hertz hum. So there's if you're in a building that has 120 volt outlets in it, you're surrounded by 120 volts at 60 hertz, you know, being emitted from your walls, from all the electrical wiring in your house or building that you're in. And your body acts as an antenna. So, you know, touching stuff like this then induces that noise in. But yeah, that, man, that capacitor is, like I say, I'm not even touching the metal. That's touching the plastic sleeve on the outside. That thing is really sensitive and picks up picks up a lot of noise that's wow <laughs> that's pretty crappy actually because um, any noise that's inside this radio well this thing can pick up and then amplify so yeah that's that's uh they they really should have redesigned something in this circuit to, to have just move my finger in this area i don't know if you can hear it but i can there's a wah, 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 if every time i wave my finger past that cap that's just really sensitive. But, yeah, so... I guess that's the last fail <laughs> on this radio. Um, horrible digital buzzing noise. Um, edge board connections. Uh, no, electrolytic capacitor. And it is not the electrolytic capacitor. I replaced it. <laughs> I did not. This radio did not get sent in to have the electrolytic caps changed. But when I saw that, I was like, damn, is that thing bad? I've never seen one that noisy in a radio. So I put a brand new Nichicon in, it's still exactly the same. So it's not the cap. That's just it's just that bad. That's that capacity. They almost need to put a shield around that thing. You know, a small shield box like this with a lid to cover up that area of the circuit, because man, that thing is sensitive. But uh yeah, that that I don't like. There's edge board connections in uh, you know, as far as truck drivers go, that would be a fail for me, because that's just gonna be a bound to fail in the future. Uh, does have some nice features. Some of them don't really work that great, like this this uh, what, XR technology noise filter. Eh, yeah, it filters out so much that you can't hear what you actually want to hear. <laughs> it filters too too much. But uh, yep. So there you go. There's a Midland 9001Z.